Hello, friends, once again. We are getting deeper here in Revit. This is the part 12. And this time we are going to continue the railings, which was the last chapter. And then we will talk about annotation objects like texts and how we can make a legend. <laughs> In this chapter, I'm going to give you useful tips regarding railings, but not only. We will also see how we can copy elements to other floors, and how to keep them aligned with the former ones. So, have a look at this example. First, I want to place windows also in the second and third floors. How can we do that? Actually, it's easy. I'm going to click on a window, then right-click, and select all instances that are visible in the view. In this case, I could also select entire project. The result would be the same. Then I need to copy to the clipboard, then click on the arrow below paste and copy the objects aligned to select levels. So I choose the levels where I want the windows, level two and level three, and it's done. You can see that this is a simple and a very useful method. Now let's learn how to build stairs in a way that they reach from the bottom up to the last floor. So the first thing is to make the stairs. And we are going to use the method that we have already been covering previously in this tutorial. Let's choose the location line at the left side, considering the exterior support. Click in this intersection for the start point and draw half of the stairs in this side. Then, follow the extension track line to place the second run and connect them with the floor above. To put it in the right position, I'm going to use the Move tool, select this run, press Enter, and then click in this point and move it to the intersection of the wall below. Click on the tick to confirm the stairs and exit the sketch mode. Ah, and as what usually happens when I draw a stair in a U shape, the rail is not continuous. When you switch to a 3D view, you can see that there is a break here. This time I'm going to solve this by just moving the position of the railing, so double click on it to edit it in the sketch mode, and move the section that's on the landing a bit to the right. I'm going to set a distance of 10 cm, for example. Let's save this, and as you can see, the warning is no longer appearing, and the gap is now replaced with a flat section of railing. Now, we want to copy the stairs to the floors above, and there is a special button to do this process. I just need to select the stairs, and make sure you click on the stairs themselves and not on the railing, then go here to select levels, and Warning, let's see what says. To create or modify multi-story stairs, you need a view where level lines are visible. So, I can't do this on floor plans, because I cannot see the levels, but this is a 3D view. It should work, of course, if I haven't hidden the level lines before. Let's go to show hidden objects. And here they are. Click on one of the levels, and unhide the category. OK, now I can repeat the process. Select levels, and make sure you have this option turned on, connect levels. And this is going to be easy. Click on level 3, then hold Ctrl and choose the level 4. Click on the tick, and now the stairs are connecting all the floors. So, nice. Now we are going to focus again on the railing. 
and as you can see, the railing is not continuous along all the stairs. The method that I used is like copying the stairs to the clipboard and pasting them in the different levels. So we also need the railing here, in the section of the floor. Ok, I'm going to switch to the level 1 floor plan and double click on the railing to go to the sketch mode. Here you can see these arrows and they indicate the way that I need to go from down to up. Then what I need is to add a railing section also here. This is easy. I'm going to use the line tool, then go to this endpoint and draw it towards the other side. I can confirm the changes. And look, that section was added to all the floors at the same time. But keep in mind that this is not perfect as the railing is still not continuous on the turn to the next group of stairs. For now, we are going to leave it as it is. Although, it's possible to smooth this transition if you want it to appear that the railing also continues there. It just takes a bit of work. The final ending needs an extension here. But this time, I think the best is to add an extra railing in this side. I activate the command again. And I'm going to add it towards the point where I have the exterior wall. I can confirm the changes. And OK, it's not perfect. <laughs> we can align this better. Ah, and the align tool will not work here. So in this case, it's better the moved command. After a few tries, I decided it's best to take the railing out of the place, activate move, select railing, press enter, click on the midpoint and place it exactly in the midpoint of the other railing. Finally, the other extremity can actually stay there. This position is not very important, as you can see the result. Or even, I could ignore the last segment because it reaches the wall anyway, and it's fine. In the next chapter, we are going to talk again about annotation elements. In this case, how we can insert text in Revit. On the Annotate tab on the ribbon, I'm going to click on the command text. So, it's simple. Click anywhere in the working sheet to start typing text. Now you can see that a special tab in the ribbon for editing text has opened. And look, there we can find the typical text options, such as bold, italic, underlined, at the list, among others. Now, if I click with the mouse in another point, I can add another text element. This time, let's look at the options that we can find in the panel leader. The one selected by default does not have any leader. Let's switch to this one and the text will have a one segment leader. Then here I can make a text with a leader that comprises two segments. And finally, the last one puts a leader in an arc shape. Now, after placing the leaders, we can still edit them as we wish by simply moving these grips. For example, in the one at the middle, I can convert the leader into segments. And the grip located at the arrow moves the position of the leader. So, regarding leaders again, notice that its panel in the ribbon has now different icons when we select the text element. Here, on the first button, we can add a new leader to the left side of the text. And it's possible to insert how many leaders that I want. Then, if I click on this icon with a minus, I remove the last leader inserted. On the other hand, 
Here, I'm able to add leaders to the right side. These six buttons are related to the position of the leader both on the right and left sides. Although, this only works when the text has more than one row. For example, now, I can change the position of the arrow to above, below or to the middle. Another thing, the grips in the middle of the rectangle control the horizontal distance of the text. You may have noticed that the icons located below to add an arc leader are off. Actually, in each text element, or I have all my leaders with straight segments or arc segments. Revit does not allow me to place both an arc and a straight leader in the same text. If I tick the option Arc Leader in the properties, I basically switch to an arc shape all the leaders there. And look that now only the arc arrows are illegible. This one at the right even it's a straight line, if I move the grip it creates an arc. Text types. There are several text types by default and they mainly differ in the size of the text. In this case, as I used a metric template when I created this file, the units here are millimeters. Texts are annotative elements, and the size here actually is what measures in the sheet after printing. Notice also when I change the scale to a smaller one, the text elements readjust in order to keep the same size in the paper. In this chapter we are going to learn to make legends of the elements we have in the project. Let's see this example. We want to create a legend for the furniture that I have in the first floor. Examples are beds, drawers, dressers or tables. In this tutorial I'm not going to put all the elements in the legend, only some of them, as my goal here is just to teach how you do this process. In the View tab, there is an option to insert a legend. Let's click on Legend here. Then, choose a name for our legend. It can be Furniture Legend, for example. The scale, we set 1 per 50 in order to match the one in the floor plan. Click on OK and the new view has opened. You can find it also in the Legends group in the project browser. And there were already a couple of legends by default that came in the template. Now, to insert the representations of the furniture elements, beds, cabinets, tables, etc., we go to the Annotate tab and click on Component, and then Legend Component. Now, to add the furniture symbols, go to the Options bar, Click here on Family and select the item you want to add. Let's start with beds. First, I'm going to choose this bed in Bunk. And if you are not sure about the family or type, you can always check it out on one of your views. It's simple. Then, I will add this double bed and leave it aligned with the first one. Ok, this time I'm going to add a dresser. And now there is something I want to mention here. Look, this is the view of the dresser in the floor plan. It's just a rectangle and probably that's exactly what I need. However, in a hypothetical situation, it could be more convenient to put a view of this dresser in the way that it appears in an elevation. And to do that, we click on this tab and switch to the view that we want to show. I have chosen back elevation. Ok, after adding the legend components, I can add text to indicate which symbol corresponds. I'm going to place the first one here and name it bedbunk. Then repeat the process for the next ones. 
and look that it's easy to place in line with each other. At the end I can move each of the texts to be more in the center of the figures. Yes, texts don't snap easy to another object, I can just align them to the other text elements. So, now you can insert legends in your projects. You can create new ones or edit the legends that already exist. For example, the doors one. In this template there are originally these two texts. Then we can change them with the doors that we use in the project. And this time let's place them in rows. You can see that each text is easily aligned with the others. And then, if we need a representation of the doors in an elevation, we can select all at the same time and switch to elevation there. Ok, this is the end of this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and also I encourage you to subscribe to my channel, Cadim Black, if you aren't a subscriber yet. Thank you and I'm sure we will meet next time.